All right, guys, welcome to a fake start of our next video. The reason why we've had to put this in is because we lost the GoPro, and on the GoPro was the start of this video. So it's a bit of a fake start, but anyway, we get to go and watch Fink race. Um, stay tuned towards the end of this video. We, we interview three of the race uh, drivers that did Fink and got there and back, which is pretty cool. Um, they were staying at the same camp as us. So we get the van off-road. We'll start, we actually get to, I was a bit nervous of this because we get to lean the van a bit as well, which um, I'm a bit of a, a cautious driver. I mean, it is our home, so we want to be careful of what we do. We don't want to tip it over, but um, we actually did get to lean this van a little bit and, and the cruiser, to be fair. But anyway, guys, if you're enjoying the content, hit the like and subscribe button, and maybe that way we can afford to buy another GoPro that I lost, but I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. coming in we've arrived we didn't go in the wash or the wash art um, beautiful it's pretty, pretty cool spot hey very cool very remote first time we took the old girl black Betty off the road yeah um, look so at she's this done really well just parked up look at that oh, it doesn't look level but it is level and, um, how do I not see that's level anyway and check this cool little camp out Brad from road tripping Ryan so over there Roscoe and his family over there, Craig and his family over there, and Danny and Emma from Last Little Lap in the rooftop tonight. Ooh, Tell you what, I reckon, I, reckon, I reckon it'll drop to at least negative one tonight. Yeah. So we'll see how they go. But they're testing it out because they're going to go off um, uh, for a long period of time without their caravan. So they're giving it a whirl. But anyway, oh, look at, look at you go. Yeah. Are, you, are you excited for tomorrow? Um, I'm excited for tonight, for the fire and some wine. What, what we got to get up at 4.30 tomorrow morning? I'm excited for tonight, for the fire and some wine. And then tomorrow we get morning, up. we're going to get up early and we're going to go watch more race cars. Did you get into it a bit today, be honest? Um, you did say to me at one point, like, oh, you're just having a laugh. I liked it when they kicked up all the dirt. Yeah. But I liked the first three, but there were another 273 after that one. Emma's preparing a few little mm -hmm. snackeroonies. Would you like me to bring out my mature goat cheese? Oh, stop. I've got um, some goat brie. You got some brie? Shall we keep the goat cheese for tomorrow then? Oh, All right. like this calls for a nice cold beverage. Well we've got the, uh, the Ziggy going. I must say guys it's not that cold out here tonight because there's a bit of a cloud blanket over the top but I'll just grab what's for tea tonight. Picked up these. Gourmet. Gourmet. Picked up these eight chicken sausages. Oh, two for 12 bucks and um, we're gonna chuck them on a Ziggy. I managed to get some uh, fresh rolls, so we'll throw that in the fresh roll. And yeah, simple eating tonight. What a 
what is going on with you and these chicken sausages? It's turning a bit of a chicken mince show. Look at this. This is turning to a bloody... Oh, I don't know. I'm trying my best. I stay... Yeah. Oh, well. It is what it is. Sort of I've turned it down. down, I've turned it down, but... Look at that mess. Oh, I'll tell you what, there's a couple of... Oh... Let's just say... You I've spoken war, too you soon. You haven't even won the battle. Yeah, no, I'm battling you a lot. Good morning. Good morning. We're, uh, it's race day today. So uh, it's Sunday. Fink has started. Um, we're at the 40k mark now. Um, so Alice Springs is 40k that way. I think Fink's about 190 that way. So tomorrow they're going to come back this way. Um, a lot of spectators around, which is good. Um, yeah, so we're just going to enjoy the day, guys. Enjoy some racing. Cook tea on the side here. We're going to hear, hear for the duration of the day, I reckon. Stay and, behind um, the no-go area. Standing behind the no-go area. No, Safety first. Yeah, no drones. Um, while, oh, yeah, comes someone. Who we got? milk frother and um, it wasn't clean before it was put away but not to fear because we got a little little uh, something here so just washing it out with some water just to get rid of our furry friends and then I've already done that here a little sterilization We're just going to give that a little swish, shake around to sterilize it. Job done. Little vodka coffee this morning. Working on the road? Yeah, so I've taken so the bug the, the buggers and all that have gone through. So now we wait. Apparently, um, I think the bikes leave at 12. I've heard. I was wrong about Toby this morning because I missed that all the way to think I missed it, but I saw it with my two eyes. I've taken a thousand photos. So what I'm going to do is I'm using this time just to um, download and empty the, the memory card, and then. Um, a thousand photos? Yeah, well I mean it's, we're not going to use all thousand photos but I'm pretty sure I've got some goodies in there and then um, use the time to make a, well we're at an Australian iconic event so you have to have at least a Vegemite Sanger, don't you? I wish I had a Vegemite sandwich. Is that how it goes? Yeah. Alright, there you go. That took a while. So that's all done, so we can take the card out, reformat it, get it ready for when the, so the next is all the bikes that come through. Um, and um, yeah, can't wait for that because there's some pretty quick blokes out there on the bikes. Are you having a good day? It is, it's awesome. I'm just parking up in the sunshine, relaxing, taking some footage, watching all the cars go past. Some of them are pretty cool. I like it when there's like two together and there was one group of four together racing. That yeah, was pretty cool though. So that's exciting and really good to see the local guys as well sort of come up in the numbers. 
He yeah. had a couple of issues yesterday, but um, time for a bit of brekkie. How good's a veggie mite sandwich? Hmm? How good is a veggie mite sandwich? Well, it's not gourmet, but I love mm, it. It goes Simple. down. It goes down well, doesn't it? Mm, especially when you're hungry. And what are we gonna do for lunch? Come on, really? Do you need to ask? Pies. One guess. Pies. And um, <coughs> a new addition to the canopy. So you got a air fryer in here now, so. Back at camp, guys have been collecting some firewood. Look at this. Nice job, Brad. Well, what a day, eh? What, eh? A day. what a day. Oh, look. Times are hard. We've got the uh, clothesline going on inside. I'll tell you what. That's because when we packed up, you drove off and left it in the tree. I did. I had to run and unhook and throw my knickers in the back seat still on the clothesline. So what is the time now, love? Eh? The time is now half past four. It's half past four. I'm just going to prep dinner. and. Um, what are we going to have for dinner? I'm going to do a one pot curry. What does that mean? I don't know yet. I'm still making it up. And what are you going to just do it on the ziggy? Gonna do it on the Ziggy in oh, our Weaver yes. pan. Yes, I do look like a bit of a wooly. A wally. The flies out here are next level because there's no wind. But so you're starting to cut up the chicken. Um, what's wrong with the coffee machine there, darling? Well, yesterday when we packed up, we we're in a bit of a hurry. So my recommendation is never rush because. I left the coffee machine on the side of the sink. Right here. I left the sink full of water. Like that. And when we arrived, the coffee machine was fully submerged in the sink of water. So... It still yeah. works. So you turn it on at the plug point and it runs. It just doesn't stop running. So, so that's I'm one afraid. for the bin. Fortunately, we got a second one in the car, so we'll bring the one from the car in here. Um, Sue's starting to cook supper. I'll do my part by warming up the Ziggy a bit later on for that to go on and then I don't know we're gonna catch up sit around a fire have a laugh have a yarn with the boys and um, the other people and then um, we'll eat dinner a bit later I'm not gonna have a late night tonight I don't think and not then school, we don't have any internet because it's, to, um, it's actually a public holiday up here in the NT for the Fink Desert Race so and there's no internet here at all um, so we're gonna have to Hitch up in the morning and drive into town. Radio. Radio. So what have you actually put in here? So I've got um, cumin, coriander. Oh, what's that? That's aniseed. So Ooh. I've got two of those. Four bay leaves, six cardamom pods, eight cloves, and I'm going to add a bit of chili oh, because slow down. it's going to be quite cold tonight. It's going to reckon two degrees tonight. It needs to have a bit of bite in it. Not too much, because Derek doesn't like too much bite, so I'll add more chili to my I later. don't mind it, but it, it can't, it's got to be edible. 
garam masala, at least two tablespoons. Whoa! And then just some cracked black pepper. Oh, go on. I like black pepper. That'll give it some more heat. You know what? I'm going to give it another shake of garam masala because I don't think that was enough. And then I'm just going to turn what, the what chicken What sauce in it. are you going to put on there? I'm just going to add a coconut milk Ooh. to it and some chicken stock. So I'll add the chicken stock first. We'll simmer it away for a little while and I'll add a coconut milk at the end. I'm going to add some potato and carrot and onion. Okay. And I'm actually going to try and cook the rice in the pot with it. So it's like a one pot does all over tonight? Like a paella, like a curry paella. I've never done it before, so it could turn out absolutely hideous. But we're off grid and I'm just trying to reduce the number of pots I use. What a great sunset we're experiencing here. The day has turned, or the afternoon turned into an awesome afternoon. The flies are gone, and um, it's my um, go to get the Ziggy out. That's what I made. Look at that. And um, I can warm this up for Sue so she can put this curry on. And they reckon the weather's going to be even better tomorrow. Um, they reckon 23 degrees tomorrow. So anyway, we're going to get this on for Sue. Um, oh, look at that. Oh, hang on, what's going on? I think we're out of gas. No. Just need to learn how to start it. Let that warm up so you can go and put a dish in in a sec. Well, she's got a bit dark, hasn't she? Got a bit dark. So, so this is what? cooked down for Look 30 minutes on high. You can see the sauce is right down. Yes. So now we add good old like co coconut milk. Look at this. Oh. Stir that in. So how that'll be that another look? 10 minutes and she's done. 10 minutes, you reckon? Yeah. Oh, watch out. Just loving the new van, guys. Honestly, so comfortable having everything where it needs to be at your um, fingertips. And, gotta say it again, but this Weber dish, yeah, one of the best things we bought on this trip. I'll drop a, a link in below, guys, for this uh, Weber dish we use. If you're, if you're interested, but um, honestly, it's worth every penny. Okay, here we go. <gasps> la la. Oh, look at this. And that is a, I tell you what, it smells like a bloody good curry. Bit of rice. Hey, okay. well, I'm going to go and have a bit of a yarn around the camp. But then I want to come back and eat because tomorrow morning we've got an early start. Very early start. Because we can't get any internet here for Sue. So the plan is to go down to, at the moment, the plan is to go down to um, the, finish line. the start finish line or, uh, in, in Alice um, and park the van there and that way Sue can get some internet. And I can watch the guys come back from Fink.
We found a wicked little spot for the day, just what next to the track. So there's the track. So we didn't make it to the oil. I well, just, you decided not to make it. Yeah, I just find parking the caravan in the, in the around the parking lot at the start finish line would have just been a bloody issue. So pop the internet up. Sounds like we've got internet here, which is a good thing. That's the track. You've got to stay 20 meters back, so they'll come flying through here. Now I don't know if this is really a good spot, but we'll get them coming through the trees. That'll be pretty cool. It's nice flat. You can get up on the caravan roof, love. Actually, I could. Yeah, you could. But there's so many panels on the roof. <laughs> no, I'm I'm happy here. But what? I think they're they're about. Is that someone coming through already? I think they're about. I think they're about 40 minutes away from 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 coming through now. So. We'll get set up quickly, get to working and um, make a cup of coffee. So we think the, well, sounds like Toby Price is still leading the pack and we don't think they are um, too far away from us. So we're about seven minutes now from the um, start finish line. I've just had a chat to these people over here. So Toby did Alice to think yesterday in a minute, in an hour 36 and they left at 7.30 this morning from Fink. So it is now just going half past eight. So we're about, yeah, getting ready for the, the front runners to come through and then it slowly just feeds through for like the rest of the day like yesterday. What's happening? What's happening? Can you hear the chopper coming? So Chopper's coming. You presume that the chopper faces the fir uh, chases the first car, so let's get ready. See who comes through first. I reckon it's Toby Price, but you never know, you could have had a breakdown anywhere along the road, which I hope didn't happen. But Can I just say, nice lens. Here we go. A big day. That's it for Fink. Is uh, Fink finished? Well, there's a couple of riders coming through, but um, all our main people we wanted to watch have all made it this year. So uh, Jamie and Carl have made it, and Troy Daly has made the double. So we're going to be heading back to camp now, and we're hoping to see and meet those guys back at camp because they were all at our camp, and we want to catch up and hear the stories about Fink, possibly even get a couple of interviews. We don't know. If they're up for it, we'll uh, ask them a few questions about Fink. If not, we're going to get back, get the van parked up again for a few days. Um, and then, um, yeah, we're going to get ready for our next leg of the journey. Back at where we started on Friday, or Saturday, I should say. What do you got? Where have you been? What did you do? I drove to the shop in Alice Springs, locked everything up. Just a recommendation, lock everything up when you go to the store in Alice Springs. And I'm back and I've just poured myself a gin and ginger beer. What did you get us for? Uh, what did you get for tea? Oh, I'm not cooking tonight, Oh, Lynn. look, I got us cheated. a roasty. There's been a little rat in there, though. Oh, I'm sure that rat's... There's been a little rat straight onto a drumstick. The rat's stick. name is Sue. Sue the rat. We've got Cole from the uh, Cross... Grove Racing Team 481. He's uh, made it uh, to Fink and back. Um, I thought we'll just interview Carl and find our prologue and day one and day two went. How'd it go, mate? Oh, mate, what an experience. Um, little seed sown um, 12 months ago that um, we, we started a process and, and um, to find a car and, and basically learn how to drive that car. And, um, and we've made it through this weekend and, and brought it home. It's, um, it's an amazing feeling. Um, couldn't have done it without a, a great team of supporters and, um, and people who helped us prep, helped us learn um, and then um, we just had to get out there and stay calm and, and, um, and get through 230 kilometres down and 230 kilometres back. Yeah, well done mate from myself and Sue. We, with, um, I just want to congratulate you on your, uh, your little Fink race and well it's not little but um, I've learnt a lot this weekend myself at Fink's not just a race, it's a pretty 
um, intense race. So well done. Yeah, no, it's been a pleasure having you guys out here, helping us to document it, um, and um, just keeping us honest, mate. We um, we have to behave ourselves when the cameras are around. So <laughs> thanks for being a part of it. Thanks, Colt. Okay. Well, guys, we got uh, Jamie from Team Cosgrove, and uh, he's riding the 486 Thunder uh, truck. And uh, Jamie, how did prologue go on Saturday? Uh, it went according to plan, actually. So we don't, when I say we don't prologue very well, we actually prologue exactly where we want to. We don't push very hard. This is a um, this truck built for strength and reliability, not speed. So it doesn't two things it doesn't do. It doesn't go around corners very well, and it doesn't stop very well. But um, it does get up and boogie. So it's a real handful. So the prologue track is very tight and twisty. So we just roll it around. We run it full of fuel. We don't try to um, manipulate the prologue time. We just let it roll. And we end up where we want to, and it's lovely then, because come race day, we can just cruise on down and um, and just start picking people off, which we do. And um, so off to prologue, how did race day uh, race or race day go on the first day? Um, half and half, exactly. We uh, the first half was just brilliant. This truck just soldiered along, just doing everything it was supposed to do. We don't push it hard. But we just um, just do what we're good at, which is just being consistent and um, and just let the race coming to us, which was beautifully. And then at 100 and 20 kilometres, um, two bolts in the steering broke and failed. So um, that was quite sad. So that actually ended our s Sunday race. So heading down to Fink, um, truck was beautiful, broke two bolts, that put us beside the road. Um, but we had a good service crew, which were able to pick it up and move it down to Fink and do our repairs overnight. That's awesome. And tell us, all right, this is the first time I've been to Fink. So when you get to Fink, um, what's the sleeping arrangements at Fink? Ah, it's good. It's, um, it's where... I spend most of my life, which is in the bush and on the ground, in the dirt and dust, and that's just where I want to be. So for me, it's at home. Um, so down at, at the community is called Apertula, and um, it's on the western edge of the Simpson Desert, and it's um, southern Arunda people, that's where they're from, and it's really interesting. So I love going to Fink any day of the week, not even just when the race is on. So um, it's part of the world that I love going to. But um, racing down there is something special. So we race down through the central Australian desert, and... Um, for me, it's about the country, the landscape, the topography, the people, and so I love it. So there's a lot more heart and soul for me, not just um, not just race cars. But yeah, we all get down to, to think massive. Thousands of people come to town, motorbikes, race cars, service trucks, helicopters. It's incredible. And uh, so a huge night, fixing gear, getting it ready to race back the next day. And so when you wake up on the Monday, um, your time from Saturdays to Fink will then determine when what time you leave Fink to come back to Alice, is that correct? That's exactly right. So Fink is a, uh, it's a race and it's one race. So it's over two days, one race. So you leave Alice Springs, race down to Fink and that's your time taken. And then you'll start on the Monday morning to race back to Alice Springs and you're in the same race. It's not two different races. Okay. So your two times are put together and the fastest car wins. And uh, in this case, it was Toby Price this year. We weren't too far behind, only about a day. But um, um, yeah, so it's an amazing race and it is unique. Fink is its own beast. There's nothing like it in the world and that's why we love it. I've been around motorsport all my life. I'm primarily into gravel car rallying. That's what I love and do do best. But um, now we live in Alice Springs. I thought I've got to have a crack at this Fink and there's nothing like it in the world. Nothing compares. So um, if you want a Fink experience, you can't simulate it, you can't replicate it. You've got to go in the Fink Desert race. And, um, and we have now, this is our second race. Uh, last year we didn't finish, but uh, this year we nearly did. But um, we love it. We're certainly a sense of pride within our team because it's a massive team effort to get this car to the start line and then to the finish line. And tell me, once obviously when you got back to Fink, you replaced those two broken bolts. Um, how did you go coming back to Alice? That's right. So the bolts that broke, we had um, replacements. So um, we went down overnight and because you're allowed to fix your car all night. So um, we made the repairs we had to, bolted it all back together and we put the car on the Fink start line as strong or even stronger than what it was to start with. So we raced all the way home back to Alice Springs and everything just worked magnificently as planned. So it was just a beautiful truck. Just soldiers along, it's not a speed demon, it's not that fast in the scheme of things, but it just holds its own and we love driving it. It's a real sort of handful, particularly when you get in the tight stuff, but um, done everything that it was supposed to do and everything we designed it to do and um, brought us home safe and uh, got to cross the finish line with the whole green team. Well done, mate, My, from myself and Sue. I'm just vanning it. We just want to say well done and um, hope to see you next year again. Ah, you beauty. <laughs> so guys, we got uh, Team Butcher here. Hey guys, how you going? All good. Hey, really good. Really good. Yeah, there we go. So I've managed to grab Troy and the, and the team just for a quick chat. And I'm going to just ask them, how was it and what was the journey to Fink 2022? 
So the journey was good. Uh, well, sort of started off a bit rough. We had some floods up at home at Ballina, and uh, so we just pressed on. Uh, Rod had a uh, few tr car troubles, but he pressed on as well, and we got out here to think, uh, what did it take us, four or five days? Five days. Five days, and uh, yeah, we've rolled in, and uh, here we all are. Awesome. So, prologue is where you do your time trial, don't you? Yeah. Um, and behind you, you've got a buggy and a bike. So, Troy actually did the double. Um, so, how did prologue go? Because you'd have to do two times, don't you? Yeah, so we had a really good run in the buggy in prologue. Um, was a bit tight on fuel in the prologue on the bike, so I ran out of fuel there, but that was still all right. Um, rolled on with that. Not that it mattered so much. And then, um, yeah, prologue was done. And then uh, into the next day, day one racing. So day one racing, so let's explain. Because you're doing the double, you've got to ride the buggy down first to Fink, which is, what? correct me if I'm wrong, 226 k's, I think it is. Yep. And then you had to charter a plane from Fink back to Alice to jump onto the bike and ride the bike another 226 k's in the same day. Is that correct? That's it, yep. So we get on the, um, get in the buggy, rip down there, get on the plane, fly back, and then straight into the bike then. So <laughs> just to jump in, so you had a lot to plan, didn't you? For this yep. all to work out, yep. had to be pretty spot on because you ride the buggy down to Fink and then there's a three hour gap, is it, from the start to the bikes or yeah, there is a gap, isn't much, there? Not much gap for us. We, had, yeah. uh, we got back in time to still get our prologue time for day one. Um, so the buggy actually, five k's to go down the other end heading to Fink, the, the buggy did a diff. Uh, so that didn't, that wasn't so great. I'll let Harry explain that. He was uh, he, Harry Binney, Binney Electrical, Ballina, the man here. We, um, uh, well, we, we blew the diff at 160 k's or 140 k's on the way down, put in two wheel drive and we uh, we got most of the way, five k's out, we lost all drive. So that, um, that put a bit of a dampener on, we pulled over. A uh, bit of tinkering around, we got it going, limped it over the line to, uh, to finish that and, and then off Troy went for the plane, yeah. So that was, that was the uh, carnage of getting the buggy down. Then Troy had to fly back, which that went okay on day one. Yep. And then hopped onto the, is it a 500? Yep. KDM 500. Yep. And then start again, but then you're only by yourself, aren't you? Yeah, then I'm just by myself. And then we had a, a bloke coming through a little bit quick and took four or five of us out at about the, just before the 60k mark. Uh, that, that didn't help the, the whole thing. So we got a bent front wheel. Pulled up at the 66k fuel mark and then realised that we were missing a bolt out of the engine which was uh, bleeding all the uh, engine oil out. So we pulled in, I pulled into some Yobos, some great blokes from uh, Alice Springs <laughs> and they give us a hand and put some uh, put some needed in the hole and we put some uh, Ryobi chain bar oil in there. And then oh, that, wow. that got me down and then we sort of got it down to Fink with the, with the bent front wheel was probably the worst of the whole thing but we limped it down to Fink and got into Fink. Uh, in that period while I was gone on the bike, we had the spy up here and Rod, the two mechanics, and they got a new diff uh, with the help of these boys as well yeah. and everybody. Uh, got a new diff in and um, they did everything except change the air cleaner. And then I heard a little <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then I heard a little story when you got back with the bike, you almost said that's it. It's almost uh, over. Well yeah, we didn't sort of we we're sort of things were looking a bit grim then, but um, the boys said the buggy's ready to go, so I had me my nurse here, Shannon. She had all the drugs ready for me, and uh, she had all that sorted out. And I had an early night to bed, and yeah, we woke up the next morning, and off we went again. So and Bruce was a navy on yeah. day two. Oh, okay. And so you've got to think you sleep in a swag. No, pretty in the van. No. Oh, in the you had a van. Yeah, Lucky but... you, because I heard um, some people crawl in a swag, yeah. and it's like zero <laughs> degrees out there, and then you've got to ride, do the same coming back. So this day too gets really sort of interesting, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, so let's. So then we are up at. Uh, I think we're up at about half past four. A uh, bit stiff, but ready to go. Uh, the guys packed up so they could get back to the finish line to see us come across the finish line, and then I'll let Brucey tell you about day two. So yeah, so because because it took a bit to get over the line on the first day with the buggy. That put us a long way back in the start at, uh, on day two. So that then made everything even worse because the gap between the buggy and the bike got a lot smaller. So there was a lot of stress there. Because, because you've got to drive the buggy down, get a plane. How long's the plane flight? Sort of from one hour. One hour. But yeah, it's one hour. getting in the plane, taking off, yep. landing, and then you've got to get dressed again. Yep. So yeah, okay. The, pl the plane 
part of it was uh, my brother Philip Munro. Okay. Uh, he came out and um, he flew the plane for for Troy. And, and you hired the plane, didn't you? We yep. hired the plane. There you go. He, but he flew it. All right. Um, but yeah, on on the morning of uh, the buggy, um, we had a fair bit to wait um, because we were a long way back in the pack because of, and uh, because of the dramas on the first day. Yep. Um, which added to a lot of stress trying. So that um, anyway, uh, we were about 10, k, 10 cars from the start, and uh, Troy's been. Um, Drinking a lot of water, to make sure he's hydrated, and he couldn't wait any longer, so he had to pee in the in the suit in the buggy. Well, if anyone's wondering where these guys go to the toilet, well, there you go. Well, it was lucky because a couple of days earlier, I actually drilled some holes in the bottom of the seat, <laughs> so it actually did drain out. So anyway, so we got it out, and yeah, uh, that was funny because uh, one of the officials thought that where our car was leaking fluid, so um, <laughs> it was. <laughs> <Bodily> fluid. <laughs> And then how did it go? Well, and then... It was great. It was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but <Slide nicely. laughs> because we had such a small gap, um, we, were on a we were on a bender to try and get as fast as we could to the other end. And he drove amazingly. Um, yep. Absolutely amazingly. We, um, we nearly lost it on a couple of corners. Um, it was a it was a great run back. We overtook probably twenty cars on the way back. It was awesome. Great effort. And right near the end, we were we were only a few k from the finish, and we actually put it up on two wheels, and we were we were this close to going over, and that would have just finished everything. Um, but it came back down, and we finished, and um, that was and then got him back around. So then. He just about nearly run over one of the officials trying to get out of the buggy, so... But, <laughs> it was great. And who wants to share the story about the aeroplane? Shannon. Oh. Shannon, yeah. So, we, we all had a job. Every single one of us had a job to do. So, um, when Troy was coming in, um, one of the girls Jack. messaged Jack because he was at the end of the um, driveway waiting for Troy to get in the car. Then when the girls messaged Jack, he messaged Phil, the pilot. He got in the plane, started the plane. Lucky we had a false start. We thought we saw Troy's buggy coming in, but it was actually a different one. Because we were so, also on edge, we were just like, just needing it to get done. And so, but it was lucky for the false start because Phil was in the plane and went to start the plane and it wouldn't go, the battery was flat. So, Talk about things going wrong, eh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He couldn't pick. Yeah. yeah, he did an awesome job finding other another plane over there, which had no fuel, and the fuel truck had no fuel. They had to get all that sorted, and then I got a message to say that the plane wasn't going. So I was actually speaking to the officials and messaging the guys at the other end because they had to have his bike at the airport at the other end, and uh, it was all quite stressful. The Canadian club tasted really. Good. <laughs> I'm sure it did. <laughs> and then, so you managed to obviously get back. Yep, so then we got the plane, the next plane going back, and then we had a really good run home on the bike. There you go. Uh, so, if you don't know, Troy actually did the double. Yep. Everything sort of, after all the problems, the little speed humps in the road, you've actually managed to get back to Fink, jump on the fight, and you had a good run back on the bike, didn't you? Yeah, we had no a great dramas. Ride, ride home on the bike. Yeah. There you go. So, Troy made it, they call it the Iron Man, don't they? Yep. How many people you reckon have managed the double? Uh, I think there's... Three, three yeah. that three that we know of. Yeah. Not sure, but I think it's three. I think he's the third. Yeah. Uh, I just want to say I think uh, Jordy, um, Jordan Carr, Troy's son-in-law. Um, he was watching on on online, and I think he worked out that Troy passed 175 bikes. Look at that! Day. What an effort! That's an effort. So, <laughs> if you don't know, think you got to do it in a time because there's a cutoff, isn't there? So, so yeah. with all of that going on, the planes, the everything, yeah. you've you've got over to Fink and mate, you've made it back and congratulations really. I think that's just amazing. I come up to Fink not even expecting what goes on behind the scenes and what you've done obviously is spectacular, mate. So well done to the team. Troy, thank you very much, mate. This and bloke over here, we better get yeah. this bloke over here to say a quick uh, Yeah, Ash, this is the um, owner of the property we at. Thank you, Ash. Hey. So without without this bike here, none of this could happen. Any of it. So let's hear a word from Ash. <laughs> oh, <I'm... laughs>
<laughs> I'm just provided a place to stay. These guys are the legends. I'll tell you what, the effort these fellas have put in has been amazing. Just for a lot of people, just to get here, just to get to Alice Springs for a start, get all the gear there without the racing, without anything, without doing the Ironman, it's just a, an awesome effort, you know? Yeah. Just the logistics that goes on for such a long time. Uh, he's been preparing for a year. A know, year. We were standing here last year saying, and he's going, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. Yeah, last year. And last year, yeah, yep. a whole year ago. And uh, and he's come out here and he said, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And he got the other end, I'm going to do it, I'm going to finish this. He's aching and, yep. and he did it. He's and we've, man. we've done it. Watch me back. <laughs> and just a quick <laughs> and just a quick one Troy how do you feel what's the body like mate uh, after that I'm a bit sore at the top of my shoulders other than that we're pretty good not too that's bad it. at all that's it yeah that's <laughs> it <laughs> alright guys uh, well done and good safe on. travels back mate and enjoy yep. your trip back good on ya thanks, thanks guys, guys. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you thank you